Okay. So today we're doing the 12 week tracker training. Um, if you have not read the 12 week year, it is definitely um, life changing. Um, the 12 week year, the book is um, a book that talks about how we as humans are definitely intimidated by these big annual goals. And sometimes we have this big annual goal that we focus on and then we're discouraged because halfway through the year, we're not hitting it and we're nowhere close to pacing to hit it. Um, so what the 12 week year does is essentially um, it takes the big goal and breaks it down per quarter. So all of a sudden your quarter each week becomes a month. Is my sound okay for everybody? I know it's hard for you guys because you're in, in here. Melissa says I have a really bad echo. Is it super bad? We have this new microphone. I'm just going to unplug it. Okay. That better? No. Okay, is that better? Melissa, is that better for you? Yeah, perfect. Okay, it was probably because we were not muted. Um, so the 12 week year breaks um the whole annual goals down to what are your quarterly goals? So all of a sudden, every week of each quarter becomes a month. So what we have done is developed a 12 week tracker that essentially allows um, you to plug in what are the weekly activities that you need to do to hit your monthly goals to then hit your quarterly goals. And I think we could all, we're all women on here currently, this is not a sexist thing, um, but as women, um, uh, Sarah Reynolds, said to Gary Keller not long ago, like a woman should have a different P&L statement. It should totally look different than a man's because essentially we have a lot more to do. We have so much more on our plates. So we do have to leverage more to have our business be the same level as a man. Um, and what she meant by that is we just don't have work that we have to do professionally. You know, when we go home at night, we have personal work we have to do too. We have laundry, we have kids, we have to sign kids up for stuff. We have to take them to school. Um, you, you know, we have to keep up with the house. We have to do all the things, right? Well, if you want to live your best life and not have like inner turmoil and anxiety all the time, you have to have something that keeps you totally organized. So the 12 week tracker is not just here to help you professionally. Um, it's also here to help you personally. Um, at the end of the day today, you're going to see how it can definitely help your personal life and your professional life. And what I mean by that is oftentimes um, throughout the week or, or throughout the month or throughout the quarter, you're going to have stuff that you want to do at home. You're going to have things that you need to sign your kids up for. Uh, maybe it's like paint your living room, change out your light fixtures, plan a trip for the family. All of that stuff can oftentimes seem very heavy when we also have this busy life that we're professionally also trying to achieve. So the 12 week tracker helps you grasp it all and it helps you live your life to the highest level according to how you wanna live it. Because I think anybody that's been in this business for a significant period of time, you oftentimes will realize like this business can overtake your life. And what the 12 week tracker has done for me is it's allowed me to not only live a big professional life, but also live a big personal life and make sure I'm getting just as much done at home as I am getting done at work. Because to me, my definition of success is just not to have a big professional business, but it's also to have a big life outside of business. But if you're not structured to do so, and if you're not holding yourself accountable, and if you're not truly focused on it with something in front of you all the time, it's not going to just happen. Um, and, and just know that this 12-week tracker has not made me perfect all the time, but it definitely, and, and I'll be transparent and show you what mine looks like today, um, but it definitely has helped me stay less inner turmoil, anxiety, because I'm not doing stuff. And it's helped me really get stuff done in both aspects of my life. And then as a team, we share, like, what are you putting on your 12 week tracker? And, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we said, have you signed your kids up for summer camps yet? You know, so as a collaboration on the team, we definitely help each other sharpen one another. Um, we'll sometimes mastermind around like, what are the activities we need to do to move our business forward? And what are the things we need to go ahead and put on our 12 week tracker? Or to make sure we're doing so. So I'm going to jump right in it. I'm going to pull up the blank one first, and then I'm probably going to go back and forth between the blank one and mine as well. So let me go ahead. Does everybody have it downloaded? The link is in the chat. Make sure you download it and then create your own copy. 
sorry, all my tabs probably give you guys anxiety, but this is real life. <laughs> um, so step number one is to really create what is your reality currently and what's your vision for your life. This is a page, and I always try to be super transparent. This is a page I filled out one time. I do look at it from time to time and update it. Um, but essentially, it's where are you at today? So if you were to look at your physical health, what are you what are you doing today? And what does it look like? Does it mean you're only exercising two days a week? Does it mean you're not exercising at all? So you are you are to write down what is your reality today? And then also, what's your vision in the next five years? What are things that you want to do more of? And then you're going to rate yourself over here on what priority it is to you. And then, or excuse me, over here, you rate yourself based upon like, how well are you doing this right now? So if you were saying your reality today is to exercise five days a week and you're only doing it two days, you're going to rate, rate yourself as a, probably a two or a three. Over here, your vision for yourself in the future, maybe to create a healthy relationship around food and exercise five days a week, you're going to put your rating at where you, how this would make you feel if you were a 10. So your vision for your future should obviously be to strive for greatness. So in the right-hand column of all of these subjects, you would actually write, what does your life look like if you were to be a 10 within that subject field? And then the far column, you're going to prioritize this. So we know that to live your best life, you need to have good physical health, a good personal life, good key relationships. What does your job need to look like? What does your business need to look like? What do your finances need to look like? And what does yourself spiritually need to look like? Um, I'm going to have the girls on my team since they've been doing this for about a year now, um, share some of their ideas just to help you through this. And then we're going to take like two or three minutes to complete this. And I'm going to share mine as well. So if anybody would like to come off mute um, that's on my team and share, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, Caroline's going to pull hers up. Yeah. Okay. One second. Okay, go ahead, Miss. Okay. <laughs> so kind of like what Amber said. Oh, I might be echoing. What's yours? Okay. Um, I did this once and have just kind of readjusted as needed. But you'll see on here, I mean, mine has a lot of business stuff, but it also has a lot of personal Um. And what was the hardest for me was really going through on my priorities. But when I did this, it's really like, okay, what priority is then going to lead to the next priority and then the next priority and then the next priority. So uh, when I first did this and still today, my biggest priority is a consistent schedule because then with this consistent schedule, I can time block and I can sell more houses, work better on my schedule, which then leads to my priority number two of trying to work on financial stability, remodeling our house. And then I currently have an 18 month old. So they just kind of trickle down in the priority list of like, what's going to create the ability to do the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. That's how I did mine. Good. <laughs> So does that give you a better bird's eye view of what this should look like for you? And I think as you go throughout life, you know, this can look very differently. Right now, Caroline's in a season of life where she's establishing herself as a mother. She's establishing herself as a wife and she's establishing her business. So creating priority around time blocking is super important to her right now. And she knows that if she wants to be um, a high level businesswoman, a high level mom, like prioritizing her time is her focus right now. Um, so just know it's not a one size fits all. I think you need to sit down and have some like self awareness and self acceptance of where do you feel like you're struggling the most. And I would honestly say struggle comes when you're not time blocked and prioritized. Um, so what do you need to do first? So in doing so, everything else flows how you would like it to flow. Anybody else want to share maybe what would be a priority for them? 
No. Okay, I'll give you guys a few minutes to fill this out. Um, if you already have it filled out, go ahead and update it. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the next thing really quick. I think another thing I wanted to point out, just like looking at mine and reflecting, um, <clears throat> there may be seasons of life that you're trying to do something at a higher level. And that means, you know, we're all God, family, community, and business. That can be out of alignment for a season of life that you know that you need to put your head down and grind. Um, and, and that would be something I would say, be self-aware about that, you know, don't live that way forever, but if you know that you're in a season of your life where you want to enjoy your kids this summer a little bit more, maybe that means you need to put your head down and grind more first and second quarter so you can do so, or make sure that you're setting yourself up so you can spend 50% of your time with your kids this summer versus them being at summer camp all the time, and then make sure you put 50% in your business. But that means second quarter, you may need to like grind super hard so you have some padding for third quarter because <clears throat> third quarter or excuse me second quarter is going to be april may june second quarter yep april may june third quarter is july august september so we know that july august september are always heavy vacations july can be a slow month in real estate not always but historically speaking a lot of people vacation that month so start thinking second quarter should look like this when we looked at our numbers from the past few years, our second quarter was always heavy busy. That means you may be out of whack second quarter and that's okay because third quarter, you're going to be more balanced. <clears throat> Give you guys a few more minutes. If anybody has logged on after we've started, um, the link to the 12-week tracker is in the chat. Download it, save a copy to you, and go in, here, go in there and edit it. Right now, we are just on the first page um, of the 12-week tracker, which is called Your Reality and Your Vision. And if you don't complete this during the class or the training today, um, yes, Miss Allie, I will. I'll send you the recording as well um, so you can pick up anything that you miss. But if you don't complete it, please know that this is something that you should do and update all the time. I leave my 12 week tracker up nonstop in my tabs because it, it's really my daily focus of what do I need to do to move my business forward? What do I need to do to move my life forward? And if I am feeling out of balance or if I'm feeling like I'm like stumbling or don't know what to do today, I go to my tracker and it tells me, and that's the beauty of it all. Okay. Next, we're going to jump into the GPS. I'm going to show you my GPS because the blank one doesn't have any content on it. Um, so I'm going to share my GPS with you and then you can create your own. I'm going to give you guys about five minutes to create your own. So your GPS tab is going to be at the bottom and on your GPS tab, you're going to plug in. What is your three-year goal for your business and for your life? What is your 12-month goal for your business and for your life? Obviously in mine, I just have my business goals because I'm like super heavy numbers driven and I like to see that. And then what is your 12-week goal? I sometimes, and this may be a roadblock to me, I sometimes um, can only look forward family life the next three months in regards to what are things I need to plan, what do we have coming up that's seasonal that I need to do. Um, so I'm going to review uh, my three-year goal um, and let other people share their three-year goals too as more of an individual agent. But your goals should be around what are the number of homes I need to sell? 
If you're an agent that does listings and buyers, how many listings does that mean? How many buyers does that mean? What does my volume need to be? And what does my GCI look like? And knowing all of that is going to give you a lot of clarity on what are the activities I need to do on a weekly basis to hit those goals. And that's what the 12 week tracker is made to do is to look at your big goal and how do we break it down little by little to get you to where you need to be on a weekly basis. You know, we're focusing a lot on growth right now. So we said our 12 week goal for the first quarter was to sell 90 homes. 54 of them are listings, 36 are buyers. We wanted to hire an ISA, hired one to two hybrid agents. And then for me, time with family is super important while I grow. Um, so a weekly date night with my husband, weekly individual dates with the kiddos, um, plug in to Freedom Builders, plan Easter with my family, plan my anniversary trip, plan Disney, and then announce another company that we're going to be launching. Um, Looking at this, I've done everything but plan my anniversary trip and plan Disney. So that's a win. <laughs> it, that doesn't always happen. A lot of the times it's like, okay, I haven't done any of that yet. But this is what makes you have a gut check of what's important to you. So after you've done those goals, down below, you're going to think in your mind, if I were to be able to do all of this, what are the priorities I really need to focus on to make that come to life? And what are the strategies I need to put underneath that? So I know time management is my number one thing if I plan on doing all of the things. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background on me, I know my team doesn't need to hear this, but anybody that's not on the team, um, I live a very busy life. I have a three-year-old and a four-year-old, a husband that has multiple businesses that I'm his assistant on, um, not by choice, but just by culture. Um, we build houses uh, we develop land, we renovate houses, we have an Airbnb property, and I obviously run a team and I'm also still in a very high level production. And I also pay all of our bills and prep meals. Um, I do have a house cleaner, so I do have that leverage. We do have like landscaping and, and lawn mowing leverage, but I do all my laundry. I pick up my house. I want to live my best life in all aspects. I try to work out. I'm not doing good on the workout right now, so I don't want to... I need to focus on working out more, um, but time management is everything. And I'm here to tell you, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And if you want to live a big life, you have to get disciplined. You have to get structured and you have to have a North star that you're, you're working towards every day of your life, but you also have to get real with your life. And I think oftentimes the GPS makes me get real with my life to tell me if I want to live this big life in all things. What's my number one priority? And my number one priority has to be time management. I have to time block every aspect of my life every single week or it's not going to happen. And I think oftentimes, you know, we'll even have agents come into the office. They'll come in and not really do anything but socialize. And it's because they're not prioritizing their time. They don't know what they need to focus on. They don't have that burning desire within because they're not looking at their goals every day. And they end up coming in and not accomplishing anything. Me, I know I'm so time blocked. I have to knock this stuff out within an hour or it's not going to happen. The 12 week year really talks about how much do you get done before you have to go on vacation? When you have that deadline of you have to do all the things, it's amazing how much you can get done in such little time. I don't know if anybody's ever uh, read any of Emily Lay's books. Uh, one of her books is called Simplified Life. But it talks so much about how we sometimes think it's going to take us like 10 to 15 minutes to unload your dishwasher. And all you do is dread unloading your dishwasher, where if you really just did it, it would take you five minutes. You know, so if you program your mind to think like I always have a deadline because it's time blocked in this time, you can get so much more done. It's unbelievable. The 12 week year, the GPS and the um. 12 week planner here in a moment that we're going to jump into help you have and create that mindset and have and create that urgency so that you know what it is you want your life to look like. You know what your priority or priorities are that you need to focus on. And in those time block segments, you know what your strategies are, or what your activities are that you need to do to make it all come to life. So for me, priority one is time management. That means with my time every week, I need to go on four listing appointments I need to consult and coach my team every week. We need to do career visioning, which is essentially recruiting. I need to track my husband and kid dates. 
and I need to make sure self-care and workout and IV is time blocked on my schedule. Number two, lead generation. In order for me to set four listing appointments, in order for me to grow the team and do recruiting, I need to do lead generation in all things. So I need to touch my database. I need to do a creative VIP event that only not only touches our sphere, but also helps with recruiting. I need to do five videos and CMAs, focus on golden letters, and then also do create an investor night once a month. And then growth and recruiting, create content, surround education, onboard two uh, hybrid agents, and then one out-of-state agent. So as an individual agent, I want you guys to get on here and share what are maybe some priorities that you need to put down in order to reach your goals, whether it's personal or professional. I'm going to stop sharing and let people share. Ashton, I know you have your GPS done. I'm going to call you out and let you share. <laughs> um, one of my priorities was time management. Um, on there, I had um, buyer consults at least two weekly. I also have workout slash health bar, which is the IV. Um, in there, I, I put household, which consists of, you know, my kids' lunches, laundry, dishwasher, things of that nature. Um, and that's just for my time management. Um, I'm working on my third one, but my second one is Legion and I have door knocking business drop offs, golden letters. Um, and then, you know, sending, um, thank yous and little things to my past clients, um, for referrals and that's for my Legion. I'm working on my third one now, updating it. And it's okay for you to have like two of these be professional and one of them be personal. Or maybe you're in a season of life where you only need to have one professional and two personal. Or maybe you're trying to build a new house. Ashton, that would be a good third one. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and what are the Stay strategies sane. I need to put under building a new house? And really what this is making you do, or what are the top three things I need to do this quarter to move my life forward, personally or professionally? Does everybody understand the GPS. Anybody have any questions before we jump on, move on? The next two is what I want to focus on the most. Okay. Let me share my screen. I'm actually probably going to let one of you guys share your screen here in a moment. So we are now on the tab that says professional. If you already have one, jump to your tab. And this is where I live. Um, so this is your future from vision to reality and your 12 week action plan. You will note that it's laid out per week, the date, which is the start date for the week you're gonna put up here in yellow. Um, and then your goals across the top should be your goals taken off of your GPS. So your three priorities should be across the top here. And some of the agents on the team have combined their professional and personal one together. I personally have my professional one, and then I also have a personal one too. You know, so your professional one could look like the sample here is lead gen, lead follow-up, active buyers or active listings and pendings, and then growth of your business. And then your personal one, mine is like God, spiritual, and my own health. Um, and then my second one is family. And my third goal is to really focus on, on um, like stuff I need to do around the house, um, things I need to do outside of my real estate business that are maybe other business focuses. Um, so I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas. If anybody else wants to chime in and share yours, um, Caroline does her 12-week tracker at a very high level, but she combines it all into one. So I'm going to ask her to share hers so you can see sort of what a combined one looks like. You do such a good job at it, Caroline. So that's why I'm picking on you. <laughs> let me mute myself and let you share your screen. 
Okay. Um, so I'll be honest, mine kind of changes as life changes too. I'm I am. Um, so like Amber said, I do have a perf I keep all of mine on one. And that's purely because it was a lot easier for me to just have one page that I looked at all the time and go through it. Um, so and like I said, I've kind of changed mine up as I've needed to even this quarter. So my biggest priorities were family, business, and then health. So I had all of my business stuff in the middle, family on one side, and then things for my personal health and well-being on the other. But then I will tell you, <laughs> recently I changed it and I started getting more specific with my business in this one column of who I was going to touch on a daily basis. Um, and this was honestly for my personal reasons of I didn't want to lose track of who I was supposed to be talking to, how often I was supposed to be talking to. So kind of like what Amber said, it's my checklist that I'm looking at every day to make sure that I've done these things. Because I know my personality well enough, it's very easy for me to get distracted and go off and do something else. But this keeps me on track. So I still have my personal. I just kind of combined it into this one over here. And then this is more of like my weekly lead gen. And this has kind of become more of my weekly lead follow up. So it's just keeping me on track. But I definitely have started. This thing is like my whole world. Um, and I don't know what I would do without it anymore, to be honest, because it does tell me what to do. So it's a lot more uh, time efficient. And some weeks I'm great. Like, I mean, if you look right here, I did great this week. And, you know, other weeks I don't. And it just kind of depends on what's going on in my personal life. But my goal is to hit around 75, 80% each week. And most weeks I do get there. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of, but I'm, I'm pretty specific. I even try and put like the days of the week that I'm going to be doing something again, just so that it keeps me on task and on track. So you'll see that Caroline has taken whatever her GPS said for her big goals and broken down her activities of what she needs to do on a weekly basis to make sure she hits that quarterly goal. So Caroline's goal for this year is 48. Uh, what? Are, yeah. Uh -huh. 48 home. Yeah. Four whatever months. For nine times. Four, three a month. Oh, three times 12, 36, sorry. 36 is her goal. So what we've done is help her sit down and break down. If she's to sell 36 homes this year, how many homes does she need to sell per quarter? How many calls does she need to make per week? How many people does she need to have in her pipeline at all times? And she's broken it down on a weekly basis. So Caroline knows she needs to do um, two buyer consults a week. She needs to make 100 calls or 100 texts. She also needs to do more specific things for her buyers, like maybe letters to a certain neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, a buyer seminar she wants to do. She needs to update CSU, which is our lead pipeline, um, every day, essentially. She wants to be in two masterminds a week, door knock certain areas, business drop-offs, attend an International Women's Day event. But then she also has her follow-up prioritized over here on the right, who she's following up with on specific days. And then her personal life over here on the left, family outings, date nights, meal prep, reading and exercising, and daily devotional to grow her physically and spiritually. So whenever you have this outlined, and whenever you've completed it, you put push, push, you type dash done beside it. And then you keep a grade down here. So Caroline week nine had 81.82. And I always say you need to be like a BC student. If you're an A plus student all the time, you're not pushing yourself enough. So you, it's better to be a BC student. I'd rather you have um, a high level list here that you get 80% of it done versus a very weak list that you get 100% done. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so that's a view of what um, a 12-week tracker could essentially look like when you combine um, your personal life and your professional life. Me personally, I have mine separate. Um, it just works better for me. But it also makes me have a realization too of what's my grade in my personal life and what's my grade in my professional life. Because sometimes my grade in my personal life sucks. Sometimes I don't even look at my personal tab. And that's not okay. 
And that's why I'm saying it out loud. Um, so I'm going to show you just to hold myself accountable of what it can look like during different seasons of life. But let me share my screen again. So on the professional side, if you remember what my priorities were on my GPS, I have time management. Um, my priority two is lead gen. And my priority three is growth and recruiting. Um, so my priority one every week, I make sure that I have time management to attend um, masterminds, meet with agents. If I have an investor's email or an investor event coming up, I will also time block myself to prepare for trainings, one-on-ones with other with the with the members of our team. Um, that's really like my professional time block of what are the things that are going to take a lot of time or a lot of time in preparation for that I need to time block on my calendar. And I personally do this every Friday afternoon. I time block and do my 12-week tracker for the next week because at 12 o'clock on Friday afternoon, I really try to be done with work and check out and enjoy my family and also catch up on laundry, do stuff around my house. So I always believe, and it's the book, the 12-week tracker book says it too, your energy is the highest the first part of the week. Your energy is going to be the highest Monday through Wednesday or Monday through Thursday. So your 12-week tracker should be 50 to 60% done by Wednesday. And that makes you feel a hell of a lot better. It allows you to enjoy a Thursday and Friday and maybe take a long weekend. It allows you to only go on an appointment on the weekend because you've already knocked out your hard stuff in the front part of the week when your energy was the highest. And that's really what the 12-week year is all about. How do I focus my energy at the first part of every quarter or the first part of every month or the first part of every week? So by the end of the month, I feel accomplished. By the end of the week, I feel accomplished. Or by the end of the quarter, I've reached my goals and I can go on a vacation and not feel guilty. So what it really does is it, it gets all of this stuff that drags you down because you're not doing it on paper. It holds yourself personally accountable so that you can then have this amazing energy without any guilt to go do the things you need to do. So I personally work very hard Monday through Thursday. I try to work at home on Friday, knock all of my work stuff out by 12 o'clock. And then I'm diving into laundry. My house gets cleaned on Friday. My car gets cleaned on Friday. So the weekend I can like truly enjoy. And if I have to go on one appointment or two appointments on the weekend, I don't feel bad because my laundry's done. My house is clean. My car is clean. And I can plug in with my kids, be gone for an hour or two here or there to go on an appointment and not have guilt because my housework's not done. My laundry's not done. And my work week isn't done. Saturday mornings, I'll sometimes get up and do some like number crunching stuff. But other than that, I try not to work on the weekends unless I have somebody that can only do an appointment on the weekends. But I can only do that because I've knocked out my work week by Wednesday or Thursday with like my lead gen, with meetings, with appointments, with masterminds, everything I need to do. So I'm going to scroll down here and look at this week. I'm at 50% and I have not updated. Well, here's done. I'm doing this right now. Done. I'm at 56.25%, you know, and it's Thursday. So by the end of the day today, I probably will be sitting on probably 65 to 70% by the end of the day today. And that's been a great week. You know, I'm still going to be doing some work tomorrow. I have another mastermind tomorrow that's on here that will be checked off done too. So I'll probably end up around 80 to 85% by the end of the week. That's an accomplished week. That feels good. That gives myself permission to check out Friday afternoon and spend time with my kids without any guilt. Lead gen, the first of the year, obviously I had wish my whole database, happy new year, you know, as seasonal things happen, plug it in there, touch every client in my pipeline and update their notes, do a pipeline cleanup. I know to hit my goals, I need to go on four listing appointments every single week. And then I also always put in there something of value that I can do, whether it's send my clients a Loom video, do um, a market update video that I post on social media. That's what I do for lead gen. And then growth stuff, it's always um, what are the coaching things I need to do? Who are other agents I need to reach out to? What type of training do I need to be doing? What book do I need to be doing? All of the things to make sure that I'm focused on growth and recruiting too. And then my personal side, um, you'll, you'll note here, has not been very good lately. <laughs> the first part of the year, I started out great. 
And then I realized I really needed to put my head down and I really need to dive into my professional life. Um, so my personal life, I always have three, three things and these stay the same all the time. Spend time with God, read and focus on anything personal. I need to focus on health related. Um, husband and family is always priority two. And priority three is always my personal well-being. Personal well-being is stuff that would make me feel ugh if I didn't do it. So examples here, read a leadership book that I was reading. Um, and I make sure uh, you'll note here that I put like tallies beside it. That's like every day I read the book. Because some of these things are not something that you just do once. It's something you need to do every single day. So I always tally it. My daily devotional, attend trailhead. Husband and family, a date night with my husband, work out, do cardio with my husband, mm -hmm. a play night with the kiddos, schedule the monster truck, schedule Jurassic Park, and take down Christmas. And then priority three is working out, cardio, get a painter scheduled for my house, get my lights scheduled for my house, and book a Mayo Clinic travel to go be with my dad. So do you see how this makes you totally like dump everything down on paper and hold yourself accountable week after week after week so you accomplish so much more? So spend a few minutes going in um, and doing this for yourself. And then I'm gonna have everybody share something that they've added to their 12 week tracker. Um, and again, like I said, this is a tab I leave open every single day of my life. I go in and add or edit or delete certain things if I have to move it to the next week. Um, and then I'm gonna tell you like, how, how do I keep this going week after week after week to ensure that I, that I hold myself accountable? You add lines if you need additional space. Say that again, Sarah. Do you add lines in here if you need additional space? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can just go over here and insert more rows. You probably noticed on uh, Caroline, Caroline did that on hers. Regarding like combining it versus separating it, that's total personal preference. I think Caroline, um, and I'm she's not in the room right now, so I'm going to talk about her without her permission. <laughs> um, but she knows that two sheets are too much and she has a little bit of ADD and she wouldn't do it as well if she didn't have it all in one. So if that's you, you can put it all in one. Me personally, I like to see this little happy percentage over here to tell me how I'm doing in life and my personal versus my professional. And I admit I'm in a season that I'm putting my head down in, in growth mode in my business. And that does oftentimes mean not that I'm a horrible mother or a horrible wife, or I don't do the stuff around the house. I do, but it oftentimes mean I do not spend as much time over here as I maybe should. But this week, hey, I 
ordered my kids photos. I got their Easter outfits and I got them new shoes. So that feels like a win. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like the small things sometimes that make you feel the most victorious, you know, it's, but it's, if it's not written down, you just have it floating out there in space, creating all this heavy weight on you. And I think sometimes we don't realize all that heavy weight keeps us from being able to do what we need to do on a daily basis. Yep. You have that weight, Sarah. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's real life right? It's, you know, my personality and you could probably ask my husband. Um, I'm a questioner if anybody has done the four tendencies. So if it doesn't align with where I'm trying to go, go with my life, it doesn't exist in my world. Well, to honor my husband, he's an upholder, which means if I give him a to-do list, he checks it off. If he gives me a to-do list, I, I look at, uh, is that what I'm trying to do this week? If it's not, I don't do it. <laughs> so this 12-week tracker, I sometimes write down, what do I need to do that he's asked me to do? So I'm more of an upholder and complete it. And then obviously that keeps our relationship at a higher level. <clears throat> and that's just me being, being super transparent. That's real life. You know, so it's made me slow down and like analyze myself too. What am I weak at? Or what do I know I have to write down to make myself do it that I maybe wouldn't if I didn't have this? Now, keep in mind, I still have my daily to-do list. Or I'm not sharing my video right now. Can you see me too? Hold on. You can see me? I can't see myself because I have the, my thing up. Um, I still have my daily to-do list. So do not think that this replaces your daily to-do list. My daily to-do list is still going to, you know, say, schedule this listing appointment, call this person, do this CMA, reduce this property, touch this past client, call this person. So my daily to-do list is still hyper-focused on what I need to do. The 12-week tracker is more of a general thing. How many listing appointments do I need to go on? Four. Well, every day I have another specific person of what listing appointment do I need to prep for? If that makes sense. So this doesn't replace a daily to-do list, but what it does replace is a daily focus list or a weekly focus list or a monthly or quarterly focus list. So you still have a daily to-do list. Now, some of them may be duplicated, right? Some of it may be duplicated, but it's not the same. Your daily to-do list still needs to be a priority daily. This is just to make sure you win the week. Um, I'm going to let the girls share too when they best update it because everybody's lives look different. Like I told you a moment ago, I update mine every Friday by like 12 o'clock. And oftentimes I'll realize there's stuff I didn't accomplish this week. Well, I just copy and paste it down to the next week if I know it's something I need to do. A lot of things are duplicated week after week after week. Um, I think you'll oftentimes hear me say success is boring. And what that means is you need to be consistent in the boring. You need to do the boring stuff. The boring stuff and all those small activities lead up to big results. And that's what this is going to help you do. Because if you're going on four listing appointments a week, let's say I didn't. Well, I'm going to be transparent. I did not go on four last week. My goal for this week is nine. So I carried over what I did not do. I have to schedule nine listing appointments by the end of the week. I've only scheduled two. I got seven more I need to schedule in the next two days. That makes me have a priority. I need to lead Jen my ass off to get seven more listing appointments, right? That's the stuff that it makes you do. And that's where the gold is. Because nine times out of 10, an agent's just going to say, I have to schedule four listing appointments next week. Well, no, you don't. You're cheating yourself. You're not going to hit this big goal unless you make up the gap. So it's helping you identify gaps before you see them in your results because you're seeing the gaps in your activities first. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. I would love for everybody to share a few things you put on your 12-week tracker. I'm going to mute myself or an aha that you have. Well, I normally um, 
when I do my trail week tracker, it's a little different because I'll either do it late Sunday night or early Sunday morning or Monday morning, depending on what my Sunday night looks like. Sometimes Monday morning, I could come in here and focus way more than I can on a Sunday night when I've did all the family things. So, but I will say, um, was it two weeks ago? I got it done on an early Sunday morning. Cause I was like up to date. So it made me feel better on one last thing I had to do on Monday. Um, but some things that I consistently put on mine is, you know, your typical lead gen for three hours this past week, I did specifically lead gen through social media, meaning like reaching out to people that I don't talk to that are just on my friend's page. And I got two leads that came from it. Um, so I got a little bit more specific cause I find myself not being as specific as I need. So that's something that I'm going to start focusing in on more. Um, I always put like one under contract or two, depending on what I have going on in my pipeline, um, just because I feel like that pushes me more if it's on there. Um, my buyer consults, I know I need to do two a week. Um, I put them on there separate, like one buyer consult, two buyer consult. So like if I do one, at least I'm getting some credit for that. Um, you know, just to know I am doing something. Um, you got to make yourself win in the small things sometimes, because yeah. that makes you win in the big things. Yeah. And you have to really get real with yourself of what <laughs> motivates me and makes me feel good. So my energy level is high. So I do more of it. And like Ashton just said, if she did not separate those out, she feels defeated because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. she doesn't get to check mark done. Yeah. But one is still one. One's one you didn't have, Mm -hmm. but she also needs to carry that one over to next week to three. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the last thing I'll say is like something that somebody had recently on the team where you guys started the touch a buyers, B buyers, C buyers, D buyers, like just making sure each week I'm changing it up because I used to say touch all buyers. Well, that's, that's a lot of reaching out. So now that's more um, specific and help has helped me a lot thus far. Thank you, Ashton. Ashton, can you um, reiterate too? What did you do to time block yourself? (laughs) We had Um, to come into Jesus meeting with Ashton a a few months ago. And we said, you're doing your 12 week tracker. Well, you can do it a little bit more detailed, but what I need you to do now is take your 12 week tracker a step further and Mm -hmm. put it on your calendar. Like, what does your calendar need to look like now to integrate your 12-week tracker into it to make sure you're executing your 12-week tracker? Yeah, I need to share your screen, girl. Share your screen. Share your who you're doing. How do I share share my screen? Just that. Mm -mm. Uh, Right here. And I want to want you to say out loud how it made you feel. Hold on. We're having technical difficulties. This goes along with my Google Calendar. I don't know technology too well. This is teamwork. Well, maybe you just. Okay. Let me get the teacher to help me over here. (laughs) It won't work, will it? Oh, we're going to unlock it. Oh, shoot. Give us a minute. minute. You're fine. (laughs) I can actually pull it up. Hold on. Yeah, just pull it up. Okay. Still do that, though, or else you'll never be able to. Okay, now we remove everybody else's so y'all don't have a heart attack. Hold on. Uh, Later. Yeah. No, okay, later. I got it. Yeah, she won't be able to share it. So the next time that you'll be able to. Yeah. So what we literally did is had Ashton look at Wait, her 12 week tracker that her? and then time block on her schedule. And one of the biggest things was what does your morning look like? And we all about had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. And I still need to update. Like now I have three sports with both of my kids yeah. and I'm not even updated them on here. So I need to update all of that now, yeah. but, um, you can basically look at my calendar and tell where I, where I am usually. But her morning, she literally has time blocked, like every segment of time. And what we really said to her is there's gaps of time in your morning that you could really start knocking out legion. So why not do it then? Mm-hmm. And that way, the rest of your day can be available for meetings, for trainings, for showings, for plugging into your kids, for doing stuff around your house, for picking up kids, taking them to activities. Because oftentimes, I think that what we see happen is when we don't time block it, it's 12 o'clock and we haven't accomplished anything. 
Yeah, I'm with this, like I can say by 12 o'clock, like I've, well, I'd say by one, depending on the day, I've got almost everything done. And it's just like, oh, if somebody calls me or, you know, it just, it takes a lot of stress off getting it all out of the way. And the night before knowing that I'm prepared for that morning, so I'm not thinking what thousand things do I have to do in the morning to get ready. It, it helps mentally. So sure. even generally how she has like a lead gen blocked on here, looking at her 12 week tracker, she knows on Thursdays, you're calling what clients Ashton? Oh my, today C. Yeah, C clients. Buyers. Yep. yep. And then I have my available times at the top that I can show houses. So I still have when I can lead gen, but when I can, you know, the time slots of what would work if I could go show houses. So it's still cleaned out in there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Sarah? And yes. this now too is really important for me because starting at like four, four thirty in the afternoon through like six or seven every night, like we have sports, two to three sports. So like if I can tackle everything in the morning and in the day, it, it gives me clarity for doing the nighttime sports that I can step away for. Perfect. I will say this with great systems, there comes accountability if you want them to work for you. Right. Um, just cause we have this great system doesn't mean it's perfect all the time. Um, we're all getting better at it all the time, but oftentimes it's the accountability that we put around it. And it's not like negative accountability. It's like, everybody, let's pull up your tracker. What is your tracker grade? Or what are some things you're putting on it? Um, and we learn, you know, it's like sh iron sharpens iron. Um, it's, are you doing your tracker? So oftentimes, like as a team leader, if somebody's in a funk, and I typically see that they're, they're very well time blocked and very well doing their 12 week tracker. If I go in and see they haven't done their 12 week tracker in a couple of weeks, something else is going on. So even if you're an individual agent, that may be a red flag for yourself. If you're not doing your 12 week tracker at a high level, if you had been prior, that you need to have a checkup from the neck up and realign yourself and get back to doing it. Because doing this at such a high level is just going to give you such an inner peace that I can't even explain until you do it. Would you all agree the ones that have been doing it for a significant period of time? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Caroline, I don't know if you guys heard her, but she said it definitely helped when she dove into it deep and a hundred percent committed to it. Mary Carol and I have had very few moments, thankfully, but we know when we have a moment of, I did not do my 12 week tracker well this week and we can feel it like instantly. We, we know that like we didn't put the right stuff on there. Her and I didn't have aligned stuff on there. Um, you know, you work better together towards common goals when you're doing everything you need to do in all aspects of your business to get there. It's just like a relationship. You know, I think I mentioned my husband, you know, if he has a different vision of what our personal life needs to look like than mine, we're not growing in the same aspect. You know, so I try every week to have something on there that means we're moving forward and growing together in some aspect as a family. And I think when you dive deep into it, those are the underlying things that you're going to start to see and feel happen because you're paying attention to it. It's like when you want a brand new car, you've not seen many of them. All of a sudden, that's what your mind's fixated on. You see five of them. It's the same thing that happens with your 12 week tracker. When you start focusing on it, when you dive into it and start doing it, you'll start to realize there's stuff on, not on there that you need to put on there, but you're also going to start feeling more rewarded on a weekly basis because you're doing the activities that you need to do. And you're going to confidently know the success is going to show up. Oftentimes I think we shut down because the success is not showing up quickly, but what you're not realizing is the success is in the small activities that you do every day. It's not in the outcome. Who you become, the self-discipline, the self-awareness, the daily to-do checks is what creates the big success. It doesn't just happen. Um, let's share some ahas and then we will wrap up. Everybody, I would, everybody's going to share one today, please. 
I just want to share the the same thing that I shared about the social media because I'm like bad with posting social media stuff to begin with. So for me to get on there and like go through and lead gen, um, reach out to people that it's not random, but it kind of is um, like, and for one of them to come back and say, Hey, yeah, I've seen you like all over social media and your team. And my son is a firefighter and he wants to start looking and it's just perfect timing. Um, and it kind of opened the door and I would have never like a month ago said, Oh, well, let me just randomly reach out to people and just say, Hey, how are you? I know them through people. So it was an aha that I got like a lead that easily just reaching out to somebody that was right in front of me for like months at a time. Let's start doing every day. Yeah. I would say mine is something that you said that I've never thought about how it's okay for your GPS to really change depending on where you are in life. Um, that I don't know. I think, I guess probably, like you said, because of where I am in life right now, it does change a little bit, but knowing that it's okay for your GPS priorities to change, and then you can change your tracker as it needs to based on that. I like that. Can you hear me yet? No. Oh, I heard you. Okay, so somebody heard me. So that's a good sign. Okay, so I'm realizing that I need a lot of work to do. Um, I think I have like my ideal weekly schedule and then I really don't. I have a very small, like three people team, but two don't work. So really it's just me. Um, looking at your, the board and I get the personal and the professional, I struggle with reality and vision. I do not see future and never have been able to do that. Do I have to use all four together or can I focus on the 12 week for the professional and personal? I'm not a visualizer. Yeah, so I say this, you can use the 12 week tracker personally and professionally and that's gonna be life-changing. But I also think you do have to have a future vision. And that's something that's we can struggle. discuss, you know, yeah, like that's what, what a is, struggle for me. <laughs> it is, it's a struggle for a lot of people. I think you just have to meet somebody that will bring it out of you and ask you the right questions because you really do have it. It's sometimes the fear of saying it out loud and feeling like it has to be perfect. You know, I think the overall goal is you need to know where you're going in life, how you get there can change and it does change. And I think the problem is we want to know how it's going to happen but in all reality, the, the vision of how it's going to happen totally changes, but you get there anyways. Because you're focused on your values, you're focused on what you need to stay focused on, and you will create it. But I think, you know, Melissa, somebody just needs to sit down and ask you the right questions to get you to where you need to, to go. Because um, I don't know if you've ever done a KPA, but there is a spatial visualization factor that's naturally in our DNA. And there's also the real, what is it? Realist realism or what's the other? You can either be real or you can be very unrealistic and you either have that gift or you don't, you know? So oftentimes, um, a, I think it's the fear of saying it out loud because it may not come true, but it's also like, how is it going to happen that keeps you from like saying it and creating it because you, you think that it can't change. You know, if I were to tell you my vision for my life, it's came to life, but very differently how I would expected it to, but I'm still here and, and I'm still living it. And it's still, it's ever evolving, but you have to have your vision and you have to have your values aligned in order for it to come to life. Okay. I'll Thank just you. add on, um, because I'm very, it's hard for me to think future too. And what I started doing is take the now and just think about a little bit further, you know, like the three month. Okay. And then based on three months, six months, and then year and so on, it was easier for me to go from now and look to what may be future versus trying to think future to now, if that makes sense. Technology, Caroline. <laughs> Sarah, you're muted still, I think.
three years into this business, I still don't know what my why is. And so because of that, I have kind of cyclical, um, I kind of go in this pattern of like being extremely driven because I have large goals and I like the work, but I will put so much into it that I'll overwhelm myself. And then I'll be like really stressed out. Um, and then I'll feel like a failure because I did that. Um, so that's one of my biggest challenges. And I think that using a tool like this will kind of help me like lay it out so that I can follow it in a more systematic way. So thank you. I think you also need some leverage, Sarah. When you get busy, you need to leverage more. <laughs> Correct? <laughs> but I think this will show you and give you permission to get yourself leverage. Because, because I think oftentimes what happens is we push ourselves, we push ourselves to so become very successful and then we have a breakdown, right? And before that breakdown comes, you need to tell yourself, I need leverage. Because in order to grow, in order to keep growing at a certain momentum, you got to stop doing certain things. So a tracker like this will say, hey, this is what my goal is but my life has to look different in order to keep that goal maintainable month after month, week after week, year after year. You can't, you cannot even possibly be the same person doing the same things, expecting growth to occur. You're going to go like this. And that's oftentimes what happens in real estate. If, if we were to look at anybody that's not leveraged or not plugged into a team or not holding themselves accountable is you do look like this because we all have this natural ability to get super, super busy and be doing the things, but not working on growing and keeping the momentum. And all of a sudden we're working with the clients and the people that urgently need my attention right now. And that takes all of our energy, but we're not focused on building the pipeline through our weekly and daily activities because time becomes a problem. And we can't buy more time. So if you can't buy more time, you got to leverage it. Does that make sense? And I think the tracker will help you, you know, say you get busy a few weeks and you realize like you're doing A and you're doing B, but C is going to the wayside. And that was something that happened in my business. I was doing A, I was doing B. My quality of customer service went to the wayside. I had to hire somebody to take that over. So I think sometimes you have to have a coach or a team that sits down and helps you analyze. This is what you're doing well. Because you're doing that so well, this is now struggling. And this is what we need to help get you support on. So you can continue to do over here really well. And over here that you're doing really well is probably what you love to do and probably what you need to be doing more of anyways, correct? It's way easier to say it for somebody else, but you have to say your, that to yourself too. Like I'm doing this over here really well. I'm doing this over here 80%. Well, now I suck at this. I got to get leverage for the suck because that suck part that's not being leveraged is going to show up in my business soon in some negative way. That's what you need to leverage. Okay, Miss Ashley, did you want to share? Um, for me, as far as aha moments, um, I can honestly say that looking at this 12 week tracker has, was very intimidating for me. So I am extremely new to this and I uh, have not mastered it by any means. Um, but I, I can honestly say that my aha moment has been, um, <laughs> number one, uh, coming to the realization of, uh, just kind of rechecking myself, um, spiritually and, um, uh, you know, going back to that place of uh, surrender um, and uh, stepping out of the uh, perfectionism mindset um, or, or, or striving, striving to um, and, and, and allowing the discipline to happen that needs to happen and just know that it's going to be a working progress and know that, that it, it will help um, long term. So help me grow. I think we could all say when we first saw this, we were all overwhelmed, right? The first time. Now it's like second nature because I do it every day. But that first time to like take the time to get real with myself, it is like a spiritually awakening moment. But it's one that will totally change your life. That's why I'm so passionate about it because it's truly what makes me stay focused and stay aligned and remove the franticness of my life. 
because I do have a lot going on all the time. But I can also live a big life and still have a lot going on and still accomplish all the things and feel at peace about it because it's who I am. It's what I want to do. It's the person I want to become. It's the life I want to influence. It's the activities I want to do that fulfill me. It's the letting go of what I need to let go of. So I have time back so I can focus on those important relationships. And so I can give myself time spiritually, physically in all aspects and really just make my life come to life um, every single week. So if there is one thing, and I know you probably saw it in my things, if there's one thing that I could consistently do and share with the world um, to change everybody's lives, it would be for everybody to do a 12-week track for a high level, no matter what industry you're in, because this is not industry-driven, correct? This is life. This is life-driven. And it's much, more, it's much further and beyond a daily to-do list. And I think now you can probably see that. A lot of people, I think, thought it was going to be like a daily to-do list. This is a life list. This is the blueprint of your life, essentially. And your blueprint or the vision of your life doesn't come to, to real life and doesn't come to fruition if you're not doing what you need to do every day of your life. And the 12-week tracker helps you focus on what you need to do every day of your life to make your, your dream life come to life. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today. Thank you guys for all interacting at a high level go and share this with somebody. I'm going to post the recording and I would love for you guys to like positively influence somebody else's life. If you have your 12 week tracker completed and you want to share it with us and we can help you work through some things, if you're struggling through anything, we are here for that too. So we would love to do that for you because we know it can change your life too. So go have a fabulous day, everybody. Thank you.